Today we're going to be talking about colors. So not just colors themselves or how to make them or combine them, but we're also going to be talking about their meaning, the psychology behind them. Uh, so to start off, I am going to start to just lay out our primary colors. And as you know, our primary colors are yellow, blue, and red. So those primary colors are what we use to create other colors, such as secondary colors and something called tertiary colors, which we'll talk about in a second. Now, instead of a traditional color wheel, I'm creating a sort of color triforce here, um, which is essentially the, the same exact thing. Um, just instead of a wheel, we're doing a triangular shape. So at the very top here, you can see I laid down yellow, which is the first primary color that we're going to start to work with. Now, yellow, what does this mean? So yellow is one of the brightest colors in the spectrum. That's why I'm putting it right at the top here, this bright beaming light. It's also one of my favorites, but anyways, it's the color of happiness and optimism, uh, creativity. We could think of sunshine, spring, but then of course, uh, a lot of colors also have negative connotations, including yellow. For example, it could also represent betrayal or cowardice, having an ego, madness. Um, so there's definitely a dark side to such a bright color as well, uh, but that is yellow. Um, so next for our other primary color, we are creating, uh, we're working with red here. Um, so what does red mean? Red could be a few different things. Um, it could be powerful, it could be passionate, it could be courageous, strong, um, but it could also be a little aggressive. It could be danger, warning, fearful. Uh, rebellious, violence, brutality. Um, so quite a few different powerful meanings behind red. Um, so definitely a strong color to consider using in your work. All right, and now we are working with blue. So what does blue mean? Um, so we probably think of calmness, tranquility, because we're thinking of the sky, right? Things that are uh, like nature, the sea. So sometimes we also think of it uh, with stability, with trust. You'll see a lot of brands and corporations use this in their color because of those reasons. It seems like loyalty, uh, intelligence. Um, so it seems like just such a, a mindful color. Now, of course, for negative connotations as well, it could also mean sadness, depression, right? We talk about feeling blue. Um, so it, it could definitely take a different turn so now that we have these three primary colors down, we can start working on something called a secondary color. Now, you can see me here kind of gesturing over mixing these primary colors, but basically to get something called secondary colors, you have to mix primary colors. So whenever we mix two primary colors together, it creates a secondary color. So right here you can see I am mixing the orange. It's basically half part red, half part yellow, and that is how we create orange. Uh, so orange kind of combines the energy of red and the happiness of yellow, and it could also be associated with joy and sunshine. Um, sometimes we also think of creativity with orange. Now it's not quite as aggressive as red or powerful as red, but it definitely still has a lot of energy and an almost invigorating effect. Um, but of course, on the negative end of things, sometimes it could represent deceit, distrust, um, things like that. Similar to red, it could also sometimes represent aggression. We think of yellow when we think of like yield signs, right? Or warning. Um, and orange is kind of an in-between, of course, of yellow and red. Red, which can be danger, stop, warning. Yellow saying yield, slow it down. And then yellow, I'm sorry, orange is kind of that in-between the two. So it could still kind of have that uh, warning feel to it. Um, on the opposite end of it being just a really positive creative beacon of light. Now here we are mixing red and blue together. So again, we're creating another secondary color. And when we mix red and blue, it it's comes it's coming out really dark here, but it looks better uh, in person. But this is purple. Red and blue are coming together to make purple. Uh, so what does purple mean? Um, again, it's kind of combining the tones of those two different primary colors. So that stability of blue, remember we talked about the trust associated with it, 
um, and it's taking that energy of red uh, and creating this symbol of power, nobility, right? We think of royalty, uh, luxury, uh, extravagance. It could also be associated with wisdom and mystery and magic. We always think of uh, the wizards wearing their purple, sometimes it's blue, purplish, bluish hat uh, with the stars on it, but definitely could go along with, with magic as well. Um, but it could also be gloom and sad feelings or frustration. Now, here we are mixing green. So as you know, blue and yellow make green, which is the color of nature. If we look outside, we see all the growth around us. We see uh, plants, we see uh, freshness, fertility. Um, it could also represent harmony. Sometimes we also think of it as safety, and maybe that's because of that comforting nature feel that it has. Um, but safety, right? We think green is go. Um, also, we can also associate with money, of course. Um, money is green, but because of that, on the negative side, we also sometimes associate it with greed, with um, jealousy, right? Sometimes you're green with envy. You've probably heard that before. It could also represent um, uh, sickness or, on the positive end, ambition. Um, all right, so now we are completing the Triforce here. We have our three secondary colors. So green, purple, and orange are our secondary colors. So again, just to recap really quickly, when you mix two primary colors, you get secondary colors. Now you never want to mix all three of the primary colors together though, because then we'll just end up with a really muddy color, uh, which isn't what we want. It's really important that you are just uh, mixing the colors in order to get the color you're actually um, wanting. So basically mixing with a purpose, right? That's why we need to learn about color and how to combine them. Now, when we mix our secondary colors with a primary color, we get something called a tertiary color. So these are kind of the in-betweens, um, the two shades. So here you can see I'm kind of gesturing at mixing orange with yellow. Um, however, I didn't actually clean my brush after painting green. So here I am actually mixing yellow with green. Um, when you're mixing colors, it's very important that you learn from my mistakes and clean your brush. Um, but I'm going with it. I'm just going to go ahead and paint yellow green here. This is yellow green. Uh, so of course, very similar to when we mixed um, our secondary colors. These uh, tertiary colors are kind of combinations with the meaning as well of the two colors that they're combined with. So yellow, uh, green, yellow green can indicate sickness, cowardice, uh, jealousy, right? We talked about green with envy, uh, but very similar things. It could also mean that uh, earthy feel, but a with a little more energy, right? Like we think of a fresh bloom. Um, so it's kind of a more energetic version of that soothing green color we had created before. Uh, so now we are mixing orange with yellow to create, what do you think it is? Yellow orange. Yep. So this is yellow orange. Now all these tertiary colors, typically we call them just by their hyphenated name, right? Yellow orange but we could get a little more um, technical here. When you think of like a box of crayons, there are so many different names for different colors. Um, so, you know, something we could always call this is amber. Um, so sometimes in the art world, you'll hear amber, which is essentially yellow orange. Um, or we could say for that yellow green, we could call it chartreuse. Chartreuse is another uh, color name for yellow green. Now here we're mixing red and orange, um, which is red orange, but it could also be called vermilion. So with vermilion uh, or red orange, again, similar color meaning behind it, uh, but it could also represent rage. It could represent anger, but of course on the positive end, it could also be leadership, courage, passion, right? Some of that same energy that uh, orange had and the same power that red had uh, kind of come together when we're working with vermilion or red orange. Uh, so now we are mixing our next tertiary color, which is going to be a combination of red and purple. So this is how we make magenta. So I'm mixing it here. I'm kind of, I'm running low on, I don't have a lot of purple here, so I added a little bit of water. 
So we are getting a slightly paler version than you would if you had mixed more purple. Um, but anyways, there is our magenta. So magenta is a much lighter version of purple. So because of this, it tends to feel a little more feminine. Uh, so it's great if you're doing something that is uh, a little more on the feminine end, or if something you want to have like a little bit of romantic feelings or nostalgic feelings. Um, it's basically a, a more feminine version of purple and red. You can see it kind of actually tones down the power a little bit uh, when we create this color. So next I'm mixing another tertiary color, uh, or I just did it there, a combination of purple and blue. So we get this very dark blue, which seems very uh, serious in a way. It has a lot of integrity, um, represents a lot of knowledge, like I talked about before with the, the wizard's cap. Um, and now we're mixing another color I absolutely love. So this is teal. Um, this is blue-green, I should say, blue-green. So for the meaning, again, taking from blue, taking from green, we're taking those natural colors, right? We have the sky, we have the sea, we have uh, the earth, right? And then we're kind of combining those two elements into a color which really represents serenity, uh, tranquility, understanding. But of course, it could also be um, a little bit too soft sometimes. It can be a little bit too serious. All right, so we have officially completed our color Triforce here. You can see we have our primary colors that we started with. We combine those to make our secondary colors, and then we finish it off with our tertiary colors. All right, so thank you so much, guys, for watching. I hope you guys found this helpful and learned a bit about combining colors and the meaning behind the, your colors. Uh, so hopefully you can implement that into your work. Thanks again.